History is the foundation of a people's identity. And when that foundation is lost, it is catastrophic. This is ever true when it comes to African history. This continent that made me, the one that I love so much, has been scarred by modern day labels we all know. Instability, poverty, corruption. But this is not who we are. Three years ago, I was sitting in my CEO's office in East Africa when those words flashed across my mind. I was working for a multinational company and was being heavily encouraged to sign off on financial statements that were a complete fiction. I wanted this company to survive, so I spent months meticulously combing through these financials to make sure that the numbers were accurate and actually useful. Then one day, my CEO calls me into a meeting. She wasted no time. She looked me right in the eyes and she said, you are not doing what I've asked you to do. If you do not sign off, I will destroy your reputation in Africa. I could not breathe. It felt like my body stopped working. My mouth was so dry, I was wondering if there was sand in it. In this moment, I was about to lose my job and my reputation, and all I could think was, this is not who we are. Here I was, about to be another casualty of the modern day narrative. This cannot be who we are, and it's not, because our history cries out a different reality. In one illustration, we have the Edo people from 14th century West Africa, a people of which I am a descendant. This, this city operated with such a well-organized and sophisticated communication channel that if the city was under threat, 20,000 warriors could be notified and ready for battle in one day. Innovation was everywhere. Their whole city was fortified with the largest earthwork in the world. They trusted their king to protect his people, yet no decision was made without the approval of the queen mother. And women weren't only sought out for their wisdom, they also protected their city by forming their own armies and engaging in battle. The natural resources of brass, copper, and ivory were used to create economic stability through, through trade and also create beautiful, striking artwork. These people were not perfect, but they were dedicated to their values. In the 15th century, this vibrant kingdom would be changed forever. They would experience colonizers, competent in conquering without contemplating consequence. After years of fighting for survival, first with diplomacy and then on the battlefield, their city was burned to the ground. Beyond the lives that were lost, beyond the art that was stolen, these people were forced to exist in a different way. New culture, new religion, new principles, carelessly scrambled into a complex system that had been carefully sculpted over hundreds of years. It worked like a cancer. Defined plans for succession were uprooted and distrust was planted among leaders leading to political instability. Medicinal and scientific innovation was discouraged and devolved into daily hacks for survival. Generosity and giving based on the seasons and the times turned into transactional exchanges motivated by self-interest. This sad part of this story is that eerily similar versions of that story can be told about dynasties across Africa be it the kingdom of Mutapa in southern Africa, the Swahili to the east, the kingdom of Ghana in West Africa, and so many other dynasties that would take me the rest of this talk to list. The 
African identity today has been melted into one messy narrative, struggle. And we hear about it all the time. Inflation in Zimbabwe reaches 175%. 30,000 people in Nigeria have been displaced due to the activity of Boko Haram. Armed militants kill over 40,000 civilians in Mali, and that was just in 2019. Now let's be clear, we should not forget the beauty, the cultural phenomena, and the pockets of progress that exist on the continent today. Powerful and passionate people, African and not, have put their money, their research, their technology, and even their lives to improve that continent. But if we continue to ignore our past, we will perpetually misunderstand our present and create well-meaning but inadequate solutions for our future. Now, I believe in the power of knowing and internalizing history because I have witnessed it transform democracies. And the evidence is in this country, even right here in this room. And that is Black America. Nobody gave Black America remembrance holidays or space in American history books for the heroes of the past. Black American history matters today because people fought for it to matter. Left up to some state governments, slavery would be called the Atlantic Triangular Trade, and abolitionists would be written in as radicals or dangerous or not at all. So when systems ignore the past by slapping new names on old tricks and like things about mass incarceration and what police brutality are today, voices rise up, arm themselves with the truths of history and fight to course correct. We too in Africa can command the truths of our history on our path towards progress. So with that, I have one ask of everybody in this room and anybody watching this video. I ask that you study one story from African history. There's so many good ones, like the story of Lukeni Nua Limi. It's okay if you didn't catch that. Just Google the first king of the Congo. <laughs> he was so thoughtful in his territorial expansion that he gave all of his new districts the rights to protest and reform his decisions. That led to peace throughout his reign and for many years after. Or what about the story of King Caleb of the Kingdom of Aksum, which is modern-day Eritrea? He would send his armies across the ocean to protect people who were going through religious persecution. For those of you in this room who are not from Africa, familiarizing yourself with these stories brings insight, builds empathy, and creates kinship. Like my girl Anna talked about over here, it's like learning a new language. At first, you have little understanding, not because the language is lacking in any way, but because of your lack of knowledge of it. As you continue to learn more, you open up yourself to a whole new world. Abstract transcends into meaning, and you build a genuine connection. To my Africans, it is time that we use our history as a guiding light for the way forward. There is an uncompromising power in reclaiming back those identities. It transforms the way that we see ourselves and the way that we see each other, and it informs the decisions we make, no matter how tough they are. Decisions like the one I had to make in that office in East Africa. That day, I chose to stand my ground. Even though I was visibly shaken, my foundation was not, because that label is not who I am. I am the descendant of intentional leaders who value justice. I am the daughter of great women who fought mightier battles. That is the Africa that I choose to believe in. That is the Africa that I carry with me. That is who we are. Thank you. Thank you.